There is something about an airplane, especially an amphibian, built by Grumman that makes it look extremely capable. And the Grumman HQ-16 Albatross is no exception. I'm Dave Cummings. I fly for a company called Row 44 Incorporated out of Westlake Village, California. I've been their head of flight department for about four years now. And prior to that, I flew mainly large uh, piston radial engine aircraft for about the last 25 years. Row 44 was formed to develop an in-flight satellite-based Wi-Fi system, and the rugged Albatross was chosen as its test bed. When your company, uh, Row 44, uh, was trying to find an airplane to suit its research purposes, uh, how did you come upon selecting an Albatross of all planes? Well, uh, they weren't thinking about an Albatross. I introduced them to it. Their thinking was more along the lines of a King Air or something that they could, that was more readily available and commonplace. Uh, the other thought was maybe even leasing part of a 737. But the problem with those two, one being the King, King Air would just be too small on the fuselage or the hull. 737 been problems with frequency of usage for them. You know, they couldn't have had complete control of the program. Do you agree that there is somewhat of a mystique surrounding large radial engines? And if you do, can you make some sort of an attempt to explain that mystique? Uh, yeah, I do, because having operated them for thousands of hours, the mystique is, I think, two things. The darting radial can be difficult and requires a little knowledge and, and skill. That's one thing. And operating them it works a little different than operating the flat engines in that you don't want to really unload them in a big way. And I know on flat engines you don't want to do that as well, but it's to the nth degree with a radial engine. Ground steering is done with differential braking as well as with differential power in the turns. There is a special sensation when flying an older airplane powered by big, round engines a satisfying feeling of power and reliability. Many don't realize it, but you can blow a jug in one of those engines and it'll keep right on running. I noticed during our flight that when you raise and lower the landing gear, the airplane has a, a tendency to yaw left or right unpredictably. Uh, what, what's the reason for that? It's the large gear coming out of the well of the side of the aircraft that's nice and clean. As soon as it gets its, the head of the wheel into the wind, and that lumbering gear comes down to go into the scissors lock, it really wallows the aircraft. And they don't come, out, come down evenly. They'll come down at random. You know, there's no given one that comes before the other, necessarily. We know that the Albatross was designed for operating on open sea, but what are the limitations when landing on an ocean? As far as limitations on the aircraft landing at sea, it's, it's certified for or designed to uh, sustain class 6 seas, which can be s swells up to 10 feet or you know waves up to 6 feet. So the hull is, is way overbuilt and so is the spar and wings. So it can sustain quite. You know, I wouldn't want to do it necessarily you know because we don't have to but if you were actually rescuing somebody it can sustain quite. I've landed it in four foot waves no problem. The Grumman Albatross would be a fascinating airplane for any general aviation pilot to fly. It's so different, it's so unique. Uh, the sounds are different, uh, the controls are different, everything about it is unique. And the one thing I've really noticed, and you can take a look anywhere you want on this airplane, you'll come up thinking one thing and one thing only, Sherman Tank. Barry Schiff for AOPA Live.